Welcome back, biology students. Today we are talking about the process of meiosis. Uh, this lesson is preceded by a lesson called Introduction to Meiosis. So if you have not already watched that video, you're going to want to go back and do that because that video goes through some of the heavy vocabulary that's going to be included in today's lesson, and it will benefit you greatly to understand that vocabulary before you jump into this lesson. Um, but if you're here, welcome. We are talking about meiosis, um, not to be confused with mitosis. So mitosis, remember, we talked about in our sales unit. There are some similarities between mitosis and meiosis. Um, for example, they're both types of cell division, but mitosis is going to be a type of cell division that happens in our somatic cells, which are our body cells. And then uh, meiosis is going to be how our gametes are created. So if you are male, um, this is how your sperm is created. And then if you're female, this is how our eggs are created. And so gametes, remember, is just another term for our sex cells. If you'll look at the picture at the bottom of the screen, um, to the right of the screen, you'll see a karyotype chart. So in the last lesson, we talked about what this is and what this shows. But here, I, this is a human karyotype chart, so I can see the chromosomes of an individual. Um, I can see at the bottom here the sex chromosomes for this individual. There's one X and one Y, that's, which tells me that this is a biological male. Um, and then I can also see the autosomes. So remember, there's two types of chromosomes. We have autosomes, which control the inheritance of traits. And then we have sex chromosomes, which control biological sex. So whether you're male or female. Um, remember, the process of meiosis is where gametes are formed. Um, once again, this only happens in sex cells or our gametes. And so, again, if you're male, this is how your sperm is created. If you're female, this is how your eggs are created. Um, what this process does is it's going to reduce the chromosome number by half. And we talked about diploid and haploid cells in the last lesson. Um, and this is going to produce haploid cells. And so what's going to happen is during fertilization, when an egg combines with a sperm, we're going to get a zygote that's going to restore the full number of chromosomes. So a zygote is a diploid cell. Sperm and eggs are both haploid cells. All right, today in the lesson, we're going to see that meiosis goes through two rounds of division. So we're going to have meiosis one, where our homologous chromosomes are going to be separated. And then in meiosis two, we're going to separate sister chromatids um, to get haploid cells. We're actually going to get four haploid cells, you can see in the picture. Um, and they're going to, each of these cells are going to have unique DNA or unique chromosomes. All right, so if you're following along on your notes, you're going to see um, one side of your notes talks about meiosis 1, one side talks about meiosis 2, so just kind of use the headings in the lesson to follow along with your notes. Meiosis 1 is going to start with interphase. Now this should sound familiar to you because mitosis also started with interphase, and the steps of interphase are the same. So um, we're going to see gap one phase, we're going to see synthesis phase, and then we're also going to see gap two phase like we saw in mitosis. During uh, G1, gap one phase, the cells are going to grow, they're performing their normal cell functions. In S phase of interphase, this is where DNA replication happens, which at this point you have heard so many times. And then in G2, the cell is just continuing to grow, it's making proteins, it's doing its thing. Then we're going to start PMAT. So remember, PMAT stands for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And we're going to refer to this as prophase 1, prophase 2, prophase, metaphase 1, metaphase 2, um, anaphase 1, anaphase 2, and so on um, to distinguish between the steps of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So let's talk about what happens in prophase one. So in prophase one, the nuclear membrane is going to break down. Remember, the nuclear membrane protects what's inside the nucleus, and we need to allow these chromosomes to kind of flow freely. Um, we're going to start to see the centrioles move to opposite poles of the cell. They're going to push out those spindle fibers, which is similar to like a spider web that comes out, and they grab the chromosomes here at the centromere. 
Um, we're going to start to see duplicated chromosomes condense, and then these things called homologous chromosomes, we talked about those in the last lesson, homologous chromosomes are going to pair up, like you see in the picture. And then we have metaphase one. I told you um, when we talked about mitosis, remember metaphase starts with the letter M. And I want you to remember that middle starts with the letter M. Because what's going to happen in metaphase is these chromosomes, homologous pairs, or sister chromatids, um, whichever we, we are referring to, are going to line up in the middle of the cell. So in metaphase one, we have homologous chromosome pairs that are just randomly going to line up in the middle of the cell. Um, you'll notice there's a little bit of DNA transfer here. Um, so alleles are going to switch over. This is called crossing over. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, chromosomes, some from mom, some from dad are going to line up along the cell's equatorial plate or the cell equator. Um, that's just the middle of the cell. Then in anaphase one, we're going to see these paired homologous chromosomes. They're going to be separated from one another. So in mitosis, I told you you could remember this because anaphase starts with the letter A and away starts with the letter A. So in anaphase one, these chromosomes are going to pull, be pulled away to separate um, opposite poles of the cell. Now our sister chromatids are going to remain together, um, but the homologous pairs have been separated. All right, in telophase one, the nuclear membrane, we're going to start to see that reappear. Um, now that's only in some species, but um, in humans, we would definitely see the nuclear membrane reappear. Those spindle fibers are going to disassemble, and then the cell is going to undergo cytokinesis. So I'm going to go back just a second. You'll notice in anaphase one, the cytoplasm is starting to pinch in. Um, remember, this is referred to as a cleavage furrow. We talked about that in our mitosis lesson. We can see that cleavage furrow deepening in the early stages of telophase one, and then it will continue to do so until we have two daughter cells. So the end result of um, the end result of meiosis one is we're going to wind up with two daughter cells that have a unique combination of 23 duplicated chromosomes uh, coming from both parents. And now we're talking specifically about human um, humans going through meiosis. Now, before we jump into meiosis 2, I want to pause because something very important takes place um, during meiosis 1. So we have talked a lot this year about genetic variation and genetic diversity. And one of the questions that you guys had for me at the beginning of this unit is, how is it possible that two biological siblings who inherited their DNA from the same parents would have different DNA? Now, of course, the exception to that is identical twins, but how is it that biological siblings are different from one another, genetically speaking? The answer to that is um, genetic variation or genetic diversity. And there are different mechanisms that, that take place that, that create genetic variation. Two of those mechanisms we're going to focus on during this lesson. Um, there's another called non-disjunction that we'll talk about when we get to mutations. But for today, we're going to we're going to talk about crossing over, which is one of those mechanisms that create genetic diversity. And we're also going to talk about independent assortment. Um, so there's again there's several reasons why an organism. Um, would be genetically different from another organism, and that could be through mutations, um, but one of those processes is crossing over. So during prophase one, chromosomes of the same type are lined up, and when these two chromosomes, again, one's coming from mo mother, one's coming from father, when they line up, part of those chromosomes can be switched. And you can see from this picture, so we have a piece of mom's chromosome here um, that is now attached to dad, and part of dad's is now attached to mom. Um, and what that creates is a new combination of alleles. Now, these two chromosomes contain the same genes, but they might have different forms of these genes. And so that's one way that we get genetic variation. 
Another way is through independent assortment, and we are going to talk about this more in our heredity unit, but for right now, you need to know that the law of independent assortment just says that the genes are sorted independently of one another during meiosis 1. Um, so during meiosis 1, chromosomes can be sorted differently, and this is going to produce genetic variation because of the different ways that genes are just randomly assorted. Here's a picture of what we just said. So you have some different possibilities. So here we have the homologous chromosomes lined up this way. Here we have them lined up this way. You note the difference between the two. And then when they separate throughout meiosis, you have different combinations here. So there's actually four different combinations from these two possibilities. And then these gametes go on to combine with eggs, if they're sperm or sperm, if they are eggs, um, to create more genetic diversity. So this sort of answers the question of how is it that an organism becomes genetically different from the organism's parents. All right, now we're going to push through to meiosis 2. Um, this is very important. So notice we're jumping straight into another round of PMAP. We are not going to go through interphase again. So interphase happens at the beginning of meiosis. It will not happen in the middle of meiosis. All right, so prophase 2, the nuclear membrane, just like in prophase 1, it's going to break down. The centrioles are going to move to opposite sides of the cell, just like with prophase 1. And then those spindle fibers are going to assemble. Then we're going a second round of metaphase. So in metaphase two, the spindle fibers align chromosomes at the cell equator or the equatorial plate. And each chromosome, you'll notice, still has um, the two sister chromatids that we started with. In anaphase two, those sister chromatids are gonna be pulled apart. They're gonna move to opposite sides of the cell. And then in telophase 2, the nuclear membrane is going to return. It's going to form around those chromosomes to protect them. The spindle fibers are going to disassemble. And then the cell is going to undergo cytokinesis. So the end result of meiosis 2, you'll notice we have four haploid cells um, with a combination of chromosomes from both mother and father. Now this is sort of a full picture of what we just went through. So in meiosis, we start with a single diploid cell. At the end of meiosis one, um, we have two cells. And then at the end of meiosis two, we have four cells. So the process of meiosis is gonna end with four cells. Notice these are haploid cells, so they're gonna have half the number of chromosomes that the original parent cell had. At this point, we have been taught mitosis, or you have been taught mitosis. You have now been taught meiosis, and it's time to start differentiating between the two processes. So if you need to pause the video, I want you to copy this graphic organizer so that you can distinguish between the two processes. So in mitosis, we are um, creating body cells or somatic cells. In meiosis, we are creating gametes, which are our sex cells. This is only eggs if you're female, sperm if you're male. If you need a definition to distinguish the two, mitosis is a process of cell division, just like meiosis is. But in mitosis, we're going to get two new cells. We call these daughter cells. And they're going to contain the same number of chromosomes that the parent cell had. Now, in meiosis, we're going through cell division, we're going to get four new cells that are created, but these cells, because they're sex cells, they're going to be haploid. They're going to have half the original number of chromosomes. Mitosis will only go through one round of cell division. Meiosis, we saw today, goes through two rounds. Mitosis is a form of asexual reproduction, and meiosis is a form of sexual reproduction. Mitosis, the end result is going to be diploid cells. Remember, we represent that 2N. And then in meiosis, we're going to get haploid cells, which are represented by the letter N. There is no genetic diversity in mitosis. Um, the offspring are genetically identical to the parent unless a mutation occurs. And then in meiosis, we do have genetic variation 
genetic diversity. Now, the purpose of mitosis is different from meiosis. So in mitosis, the purpose is growth, development. Um, mitosis creates body cells to repair damaged or worn out body cells. Meiosis's purpose is to create sex cells, which we know are needed for reproduction. All right, feel free to go back to any part of the video that you missed, um, and I will see you again in the next lesson.